See, wait, I gotta let some more people in here. Admit all. I think they're in at this point. So um, my guess is people will be continuing to join here as we kind of go. So let me see if I can minimize this. Um, so what, what I'm gonna get started on here is the common problem <laughs> solutions. These are some of our most commonly used products where we can use them to have their best utilized to, to make it, uh, to kind of give you a, a really baseline idea on how NDS products are gonna work to help you solve your drainage issues. This first page that we're looking at here is from our home drainage center. So basically on our website, we've got this, this, this portal where you can go into, if you click on any of these arrows that are um, on here, you'll be able to get a pop-up that'll let you know what products you use, you know, what's gonna be best, channel drain, catch basin, easy flow, flow well, and you kind of go through it that way to, uh, to, to make it easier on yourself, so admit. And I apologize if anybody is seeing this here. Um, I'm just letting people in as I go. I don't know how to get rid of that, but we'll, we'll work with it. So let's see here, next page. Oh. So some of the problems we're gonna be talking about here are downspout runoff, runoff from impervious surfaces, water in lawn and low areas, water in landscape beds and natural areas, high groundwater and a combination of problems. Um, our solutions, downspout adapters, catch basins, low profile adapters and grates, pop-ups, channels and chance drains, fly, flow well, dry wells and easy flow trench drain. Um, this sheet that you're looking at right here um, is a pretty nice sheet to have with you when you're going out looking at a job. Basically, it's just a, a, a little bit of a cheat sheet. If you're looking at a, you know, any of these common problems, you can kind of cross-reference them going across. It'll give you an idea of what you should be looking at in terms of getting a bid together in order to solve your, your customer's problems. It's handy to have, you know, I, we, we, I've got contractors that have this sheet right here laminated, and they just kind of keep it in their truck. So um, when they go out and look at a job, they're able to, to, to see what's what. All right, things are a little uh, pokey here. Hold on. There we go. So uh, downspout runoff problems. Everybody's seen this problem before where you've got a, on the bottom of a downspout, just massive erosion because the water is just blowing out. All the, all the vegetation, any soil that's underneath of that downspout, and it's just making all kinds of, of issues, you know, issues in the basement, uh, issues where, you know, you can't get anything to grow in that area. So roof runoff discharging from the downspouts adjacent to the building can cause foundation damage, wet basements and crawl spaces and may compromise landscape plantings. Trying to go to the next slide here, guys, sorry. Okay, so uh, downspout runoff problems. You know, some of the solutions that, that you see, you know, nothing like seeing a $2 million home with a four foot piece of corrugated pipe coming out of the downspout to run it four feet off of the foundation or the uh, little aprons here that, uh, you know, move it even less far away from, from the actual home, which can, you know, lead to the same problems that have nothing there at all. I apologize about the lag time here. I'm just going to start kind of hitting advance here so I can talk my way through them. This is really not being cooperative. There we go. So downspout runoff problems, direct plumbing um, are some of the things that a lot of guys are going to use with, um, you know, four inch sewer and drain pipe and fittings uh, to pipe it directly into the ground. We could talk about advantages and disadvantages to that, and then flat grates with, um, with our catch basins is a, another commonly used um, solution in order to make this happen. All right, downspout runoff problems here. I wanna see if I can see something here. Oh, now we're just ripping through these things left and right. There we go. All right, so downspout runoff problems. 
um, what, what are our solutions going to be? We're going to use downspout adapters, catch basins, grates, and filters, low profile adapters, and grates and pop up emitters. Adapters transition from a square rectangular downspout to a pipe. Catch basins, low profile adapters, and grates collect downspout discharge and connect piping, allow for conveyance away, and pop up emitters is basically what everything runs, runs to somewhere down the line in the course of the system. All right, so roof runoff concern. So when you're trying to figure out what you're going to use in terms of, you know, can I get away with using nothing at all underneath the downspout? Or can I get away with maybe just doing a pipe connection? Or do I, should I really be looking at a catch basin filter with a great solution? These are the things you kind of want to keep in mind. You know, low concerns are going to be soils that are really well drained, like things at the beach. Um, you have positive slope, maybe the house is at the top of the hill, no basement or crawl space. Medium concern is no overhanging trees, but you know maybe you've got um, some some small standing nuisance rainwater after an event. You know high concern things where you would want to be using a catch basin filter for sure are scenarios where you've got a roof that's in really bad shape, or you've got a lot of mature trees hanging over the gutters that can potentially clog things up. You've got really poor clay soils uh, around the house that are holding and saturating a lot of water. These are the situations where you really want to be considering using a catch basin as well as maybe even a filter to make sure that that system remains clean. So you, pictures of the three of these here. The first one's a rain garden where those downspouts or those gutters are just flowing directly into that, running over the rocks. It's not really eroding anything away. You have a medium concern, you can get away with plumbing, you know, hooking up a Y or a T with a grate with a clean out that you get a snake or a pipe down into if it gets clogged. Uh, but a high concern, you definitely want to be thinking nine, 12 inch catch basins with a filter and a, a variety of great choices as well. All right, so downspout adapters. Um, this is what probably, you know, I, this is what I see more of than anything else when guys are tying the downspouts to try to get them underground and get them out to a different point on the property. Um, guys do this a, a, a bunch of different ways. You know, when I teach this class in person, usually there's you know, do I put the Y right side up or do I put the Y right uh, upside down? You know, that's a question that always comes up. Some townships require that. But this is going to be a, a, a suitable solution no matter how you're comfortable hooking it up. Um, when you don't have trees over overhanging the roof, the roof's in good shape and there's no real possibility for a lot of debris to get into your system. Um, downspout adapters. Uh, this is what we're talking about things where you want to be able to clean the thing out. You can see over there we've got a uh, we, we we have a sweep a sweep T there um, or I mean a Y that's going to um, allow for you to be able to get some sort of snake or something down there in case it does get clogged. You just don't want to put yourself into a situation where you could potentially have a system that gets clogged and you've got no real way of cleaning it out. We've all seen the picture there on the left of the um, the the plumbing type system that gets you underground that's gotten completely clogged and now the water's just coming out of the top. I find it, this works best if I advance a few slides at once and then kind of work my way backwards. And I, okay, here's a video of um, installing a, a, a downspout, a downspout adapter and transition to a pipe. Pretty straightforward, right? So catch basins. So NDS manufactures catch basins that run all the way from a six inch round speedy basin all the way to a 24 inch square um, catch basin solution. We run anywhere from three inch um, corrugated and sewer and drain pipe all the way up to 12 inch corrugated and smooth wall drain pipe that'll be able to convey the water once you get them into these basins. Um, all these are typically stocked by, um, by Aquarius. Um, you can get anything that you need, you know, at, at a later part of this presentation or maybe even at another meeting, we can get into how you design these systems to figure out which one of these catch basins are going to work right for you. 
die egg. I mean, you can see that that guy has an irrigation line to deal with. He's going to set it up there so he can get under that. And the next slide here, we're going to talk about how to make up the difference there in height. So, well, actually, we'll get to that here in a minute. But low profile adapters. Basically, what a low profile adapter is, is a catch basin. Um, it's the grate, and it has the same flow rate as a catch basin but it doesn't have the sump underneath of it. So if you are trying to tie into a pipe that may be two, three feet underground, or if, you're really deep, or if you have a really deep invert that you're trying to match up to, um, that catch basin, you, you're kind of at a fixed height in terms of the pipe that you're, you can take out of it. So if you go with a low profile adapter, it gives you a lot of variability and you can kind of make that invert at any height that you want. These come in really handy if you've got to go really deep into the ground or if you've got another pipe that you're trying to, to match up to and you don't want to do it via catch basins and risers to, to make it happen. So drainage grates. I mean, we are the industry leader in grates. You know, it doesn't just have to be a black or a green slotted grate. You know, we, we do botanical grates. We do wave pattern grates. Um, we do them in sand color, green, black. Uh, gray. I mean, we, we, we offer a lot of choices from plastic to ductile iron to uh, even brass. If a customer is doing a really high end pool or something in a really, really um, high visibility area where they don't want to see a plastic grate. If there is a channel or a catch basin that you're looking to install, you're not comfortable with their standard grades, it's worth asking um, any representative uh, from Aquarius where they can reach out to me. And we can definitely give you all the options that would be possible for in terms of getting a stylish and good looking grate onto your project. Catch basin risers. Um, so we make risers for all of our catch basins from the speedy basin all the way up through the 24 inch basin. What these are going to allow you to do, you see them here on the left, you know, it's going to give you anywhere from six to about 12 inches of height that you can add on to bury these things and incrementally, uh, incrementally deeper based on the size of the riser. So if you've got to just go six inches deeper and it's not worth the aggravation of tying a T and doing the other things that uh, are involved with a low profile adapter, this is a, another direction you can go. We want to give you as many um, possible options to get the heights and the inverts where you need them as we possibly can. So this, that guy that was having the issue with it being too low, this is how he is able to now make up for it. Let's see if I can get back here. There we go. So you can see he's underneath of that drainage pipe. He's got to get a little bit higher up. He keeps his sump by using the 12 inch catch basin, but he gets it high enough where it can be at a, um, a manageable distance from the actual downspout there. Basin filters. This is something that I, I don't feel like you can, uh, you can kind of skirt past. What's great about a basin filter, we make them only for nine and 12 inch uh, square catch basins. Um, any debris that's going to make it off of the roof and can get through the grate that could possibly back up your system is now going to get caught in that filter. What's great about the filters too is um, A, it keeps the system clean and B, it's a, it's a little bit of a, a maintenance you know, revenue possibility where if you go out and you're cleaning out the leaves in the fall or you're doing a spring cleanup, you know, you can take these out, shake them out, clean them out, and it's an extra, you know, 10 bucks or say, you know, to clean out all these catch basins throughout the property. Um, the biggest advantage is going to keep your system clean and sort of a secondary advantage is it is an additional maintenance revenue opportunity. So these come folded flat uh, in a bag. Once you open the bag, you take it out, unfold it, drop it into the catch basin. You put your grate right back on top, make sure your screws line up, and you've now got an additional level of protection to make sure that that system remains clean moving forward. Something new that we released in 2018 is our downspout defender. What's cool about the downspout defender, well, first of all, we only make it in a 12 inch. We're working on the molds now for a nine. Uh, the 12 inch defender allows the water any, so you set up your, your gutter, I mean, your downspout right over the top of this. So the fact that this is angled means that any debris that could make it off of the roof will simply slide down the face of this and you've got an angled face of the grate that's never gonna actually be able to get clogged. 
It's going to make sure that you never have any issues with things, um, you know, basically blocking the, the grate right at the face level. So you, you won't have an issue with things sort of flooding the area around the catch basin. Um, and it really allows for a, um, a, a worry-free solution in terms of a grate to make sure that you don't have that issue moving forward. Um, these do stand up a little bit proud, you know, that they're, they're, they're um, probably about eight inches tall. They're not for every application. You know, if you've got a, a, a one gallon perennial in front of this thing uh, and a white foundation, it might not be the solution that you're looking for. I think the best solution, the, where this works best is in a commercial or light commercial application where you've, um, you, you've got, you know, four to six inch downspouts flowing into a 12 inch basin. Um, and you don't have to worry ever about getting a call back that the system got clogged up or now they've got water in the, uh, the basement of the building or, or, or somewhere else in the property. We're doing so good with advancing slides. All right, so this person. Okay, so the downspout defender installation. So if you're right up against the foundation, you don't have anything to worry about. Drop straight off of the gutter and into the downspout. If you've got, you can either do it that way or you can do it um, with a, just a simple, um, you know, an angle on the end of the downspout. Now, if you're dealing with a foundation underneath here, you may need to put a sweeper or return in order to line up properly with the, um, line up properly with the downspout defender. Pop-up emitters. Now there's always conversation in, in a group setting with, with a pop-up emitters. I'll put this to the group and feel free to just unmute yourself and jump in. Is there anybody out there that either does not use uh, pop-up emitters or has issues with pop-up emitters that um, they would like to kind of share with the group? Because there's always conversation about these. And I'll just give it a minute for somebody to speak if they choose to. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, the, I just uh, walked uh, this morning or yesterday in a property that they had a, a pop-up meter installed by somebody, and the the lead, the green lead, was um, uh, was about one feet from the from the white uh, from the white pipe. So I went I went and just put it back and push it um, because I was walking the property uh, as a new customer for mowing. So I just didn't want my guys to run over that stuff. So um, is there a way that you can attack? And, and what I assume is because we had three inches of rain two nights ago, and then we had like another inch yesterday. So I assume the water really pushed it out. The customers are stranded it somewhere, you know, not in the country. So that's why I was, uh, I couldn't tell anything. So is there a way to secure that thing in there so it doesn't uh, come off? Sure, and thanks for asking the question. Uh, yeah, I've, um, I, you know, before I got, I was working for NDS, I did landscape design build for years. And a trick that we used to use is we just put a little, you know, quarter to a half inch set screw, and you know, the, the, to go through the PVC and into the side of the uh, pop up in order to make sure that it that it wouldn't um, that it wouldn't get blown off in the rain. I can tell you that one common mistake that people will use is they might have 1,200 feet of roof going into one catch basin, which is fine, but the volume of water that's coming out of that pipe, while it's totally, you know, okay for the pipe in the catch basin, the actual pop-up emitter itself probably can't handle that volume. There's a lot of value in, um, you know, somewhere splitting that pipe off into two. And then instead of having, you know, at some point in that 30 foot run of PVC, four inch PVC to maybe put a Y and then to run two pop-ups if there's a really large volume of water, that way you split the difference of the amount of volume that's coming out of the pop-up at the end of the run and you don't get issues like that as often. That makes oh, sense? That, oh yeah, absolutely. So what was the number that you say? Um, you don't want um, how much of a roof should one pop-up kind of like um, handle? Uh, I, I, you know, there is a formula for that. We can, we can do one of two things. We can either take that offline at some point. I can, you know, share my email address with you guys um, as to what sort of the, um, how much a pop-up can actually handle. Uh, that's in a kind of a separate part of, of, of this presentation, but we can, we can talk about that. You know, I'll give you my email address, email address. You can send it to me and I can 
be okay. more than happy to share that with you. That, that works. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Raul. Any other questions at this point? All right, trying to advance the slide here. There we go. Okay, variable angle sewer and drain fitting. Um, really neat um, product that we released years ago. Um, if you've got sort of an oddball angle, you know, it's not a 45, it's not a 22 and a half, it's, it's a sort of somewhere in between. Uh, this is really nice because you can see the, the blue ring around that did, allows for this to be twisted anywhere from zero to 90 degrees. So instead of having, you know, two rocks, a 22, and then a digging bar to kind of bend that thing a little bit to get a, a fitting knocked onto it so you can turn it one direction or another, having one of these on your truck for a situation like that really makes a lot of sense. I'm not going to recommend using these on, on, uh, connections all the time, but it's kind of one of those things where if you need it and it's in the truck, it saves a lot of time and a lot of aggravation. And I do apologize. Having this class without having the samples here to kind of show you guys is a little bit, um, uh, uh, you know, but we're working with what we got in the, in the quarantine world and what we live right now. So, um, but all these products that we're going over to are going to be on the shelf at, at, at Aquarius. So this kind of gives you a little little view of how it works. And again, it's not something you're going to use on every fitting and connection, but when you need it and it's there, it's a, uh, it, 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 it's a handy, handy, handy product for sure. And there you go. All right. So we're going to shift away, um, shift to water on imper uh, on impervious surfaces, um, impervious surfaces, we're talking about why, uh, walkways, patios, driveways, patio uh, plazas. And what you look for to see if you've got standing water, you know, if, it, if you see a site a you know, week after it rains, you want to look for standing of the surfaces, mud or silt deposits, accumulation of flooded debris, cigarette butts will usually kind of make their way into those areas, and uh, water intrusion and structural damages. So if we're trying to collect water uh, going down going across an impervious surface, the thing that we're going to re always recommend is going to be a channel drain. Um, ch uh, channel and trench drains collect the sheet flow of runoff from impervious surfaces. Catch basins and low profile adapters work best in paved areas with a directional flow to a single low point or multiple low points. And then we're always going to be sending those things either to daylight or out of a pop-up emitter. This is a kind of a video to give you an idea of how a channel, oh, let's go back, of how a channel drain works. You know, you, you've got a predictable slope running towards a point that is extended, you know, a 12-foot wide area that you want to collect that water, you know, in front of a garage is a really perfect example on how to do this. That's where a channel drain is going to be great because you collect that entire 12-foot wide width running all in one direction. And instead of having to pitch concrete a million different ways to get into a catch basin, you can run it all in one sheet and collect it in the channel. So channel drains are also called trench drains. Um, they act as a gutter and perimeter drain for large volumes of sheet flow runoff of hardscape, hardscapes like driveways, patios, decks, and plazas. Um, I will say that there's a couple of things I always recommend with, with channel drains. When possible, you always want to outlet a, a channel drain out of the bottom. Um, if you run it out of the side, you can see right here that a lot of guys will run a channel drain right out of the side outlet here. Now, if you've got concrete going over this at a four inch pipe, you're only going to have like an inch of concrete here at the top. You don't really want to have that. You're just asking for it eventually to crack or kind of look lousy over time. Um, when possible, run it at the bottom. It's going to function a lot better. Any water that's sitting in the bottom, of there, there'll be no standing water in that channel after rain if you run it out of the bottom. The other thing is to always, 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 and if you take nothing away from this call today, remember this always put a channel drain in some concrete. I understand that it's not easy to get concrete around them in a paver installation, or you know, if you're putting it somewhere where you don't have that much depth you can work with. A little bit of concrete is better than none. And if you can get some concrete under the bottom of that channel and some around the sides, you're always gonna be better off for it because it's gonna just shore that thing up 
solidify it and make it so it's going to be less susceptible to freeze thaw. Um, you know, if you don't put a channel drain in, in some sort of concrete, typically over the winter and summer, that thing's going to get kind of pushed around on the ground. It's just, a, it just creates a much more durable and reliable system um, that you'll be able to have confidence that it's not going to fall apart over time. Hey, Eric, it's Justin here. Go ahead, Justin. Hey, we had a question coming over on the chat from Andrew. Um, he, he's wondering, do you have on your website a channel drain sizer that automatically sizes the drain cut sheet and CAD detail similar to ACO drains? We do not have that system at our fingertips just yet. Any, um, any installation cut sheets, you can find those on our website. Um, so if you're looking to, and I can probably go to our website here to kind of show you a couple of, of little cheat sheets, not cheat sheets, but kind of uh, the ways to navigate. So if we, you know, I can make time today so that we can actually go onto the website and I can show you some ways to kind of navigate around that. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay. And whoever asked the question is that, I mean, w would that be beneficial for us to spend a few minutes on the website as well? Oh, sorry about that. I'll just take that as a yes, and we'll make that a part of this. I'm keeping an eye on the time here as we go. It's 2.30 now. So you can see here that they're putting this thing in the ground with these rebars. And if you notice that that channel was actually floating uh, on, to, on the rebars to allow for concrete underneath of it and around the sides. So our extruded profile channel drains are basically our pedestrian type channel drains. Things that aren't really built for large vehicular loads. Um, extruded channel, the best way to explain it is that um, when you were a kid and you had that Play-Doh like fun factory that you put Play-Doh in and then push the top down and it would make like the spaghetti strands. That's basically an extruded type channel. That's how we make it. Our manufacturing is, is very similar to the way that that thing works is you push a you know, a liquid channel through a mold, and then you come up with these, these options here. So that's the micro, the slim, the mini, and the speedy. Now, when you get into an injection molded channel, you're actually putting the, the, um, the plastic into a mold and making these one at a time. What that allows for is it to become a lot more feature rich. You know, you can see you've got the, um, the, the rebar clips here along the side. We've got the reinforcing ribs around the side of the, of the uh, injection molded channels, the Pro Series typically. Um, you also have, um, you know, these parts here that we make that, that, that come in the kit configuration. It'll, we have knockouts on the bottom and the sides of these. It just allows you to add more features and build a, a little bit more of a sturdy channel. All right, so the next line of channel that we have is a pre-slope uh, trench drain. That's our door slope line and then our filkerton line, which is our concrete, we'll get to in a minute. Um, if you've got a dead flat um, paved area of concrete or, or asphalt and you need to get that uh, water from, you know, going downhill one way or another, the advantage of the dura slope is it will remain completely flat at the surface, but as the channel goes either from left to right, it gets a little bit deeper on every channel to get the water moving in one direction or the other. Um, it is a very, very high quality product. Um, we, we saw a lot of this. We can go anywhere from a pedestrian application all the way up to a um, triaxial rated um, with a ductile iron grate and frame. Um, we saw a lot of this in commercial applications, not so much in residential, although it does come up. Um, if you've got any questions or you think that this is something that would be um, useful for a project that you're working on, I just urge you to reach out to the guys at Aquarius or, and they can reach out to me or, or you can reach out to me directly and I can kind of walk you through that first system and show you how it works. You know, for the, for the consideration of time, I just want to make sure that I get through everything. And this is a little, you know, you got to, they're descending channels by number. We can get to that. If that, if that project comes up, reach out, we'll figure it out together. Filkatin's a very similar product and it's pre-slope, but it is a, uh, a fiber concrete product. 
This is for very heavy heavy duty applications. We we sell these to airports, uh, bus terminals, um, even highway applications. So this is a um, a full one piece concrete meter channel that you can get a variety of grades in. And if an application calls for really heavy duty uh, really heavy duty channel drain, or you've got a bid for a competitive product in a concrete channel, we urge you to kind of reach out to us. We'll help you out with the fill them. Curvilinear channel drains. We have something called a radius coupling. Uh, radius couplings can either be used alone, uh, just in a long accordion type application, which is very expensive and labor intensive, or uh, in conjunction with the five inch pro series of the door slope, to um, a good example of this is how do you make your curves around like a track that you see when you see the channels around tracks, um, like you know, around football fields. Uh, curve a linear channel gives you three degrees of separation in between the two sections and allow you to make um, long sweeping curves over long periods of, of distance. Some pictures here of the curve a linear, how it works. So here's the radius coupling installation. So you can see they're, they're actually hanging these things um, basically on a wire off of, a, uh, off of these forms that they have built on the side and they're able to measure the, 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 the actual turn that they're looking to get. Um, it is very labor intensive. I'm, I'm, you know, if the application calls for it and the, and the customer's got the dough to do it, by all means, it's available. But um, no, if you got into something like this, uh, that would it would be a labor intensive and expensive process. Water and lawns or low areas. We're kind of getting away from the channel drains and some of our other products at this point. Um, easy flow and flow well. Uh, you want to look for yellowing, thinning, or dying turf. You know, standing water, musty smells. Uh, low areas in the landscape to collect water or just you know general. Hey, I've got this back lard. It's always soaking wet. What do I do about it? So if you've got those areas where you have a low spot and you can get the water um, underground and conveyed somewhere else in the property, a possible solution is going to be a, um, a, a catch basin and, and pipe. Now, if you've got something where you can't really put that water somewhere else on the property and daylight it or run it through a pop-up emitter, then flow wells are something that you want to be, uh, be, be, be considering. So flow well is a, uh, a open bottom dry well, stores 50 gallons of water, two and a half times its tension volume, a traditional gravel, gravel filled dry well of equal volume. When you fill a hole with gravel and fabric, you're only getting about 40% actual void space in between those gravel um, pieces. When you put in a flow well, that is a completely empty um, interior. So you get an act, you actually get 50 gallons of, of volume out of that space where you would only get a fraction of that if you're using gravel in the same amount of space. Um, the pipe connections, you know, it, it's easy to run pipes into this thing. You can either put a, um, the, the, the panels knock out pretty easily, the units are stackable, or you can connect them in a series to provide additional volume. Um, so applications here, you can eliminate puddles, you know, backwash tank, you can put, if you have it at something where, you know, maybe the, the house is at a low, low spot, it's running uphill, and you want to do something with the gutters to get them under the ground, you can put flow walls in on the, you know, off of the downspouts in order to hold that water, let it leach back into the ground instead of sitting at the surface and making a mess. So flow wall comes in a box in three pieces. Comes in a box, three pieces, three sides and a lid. Gravel around, it's always recommended. And some gravel underneath as well, just to create some extra storage volume and give that water that would flow into it. Instead of just sitting there and make, making mud at the bottom, six inches to a foot of gravel is gonna do the application a lot of good. So Easy Flow Engineered French Drain uh, is a, comes in 10 foot sticks, three, four and six inch interior pipe is available. Um, the outside diameter of the three inch pipe uh, with the, the aggregate around it is seven inches. The four inch internal pipe is a 10 inch total diameter pipe. And then the a six inch internal pipe is a 15 inch total diameter. Really great way to store some water and move it. And it's got a lot of advantages we'll, we'll talk about here in the next few slides. 
So it's a 30 sieve geotextile mesh with a geosynthetic aggregate and then a corrugated pipe on the inside. That's where pre-engineered French drain or easy flow works. So applications here, you have an interceptor or a curtain, you know, if it's running down a hill here and you want to be able to pick up the water before it gets into your customer's lawn, that's a really good way to, to work this here. If you're running it off of a downspout and you want to make sure that not as much water is actually making it out of the system, added some easy flow into those spaces is a good way to store some of the water and reduce the volume that actually makes it out of the emitter down here at the end. Of course, a French drain uh, behind retaining walls is really good, uh, along a, a footer or a foundation. Uh, or, these are all great applications for easy flow. Before I get too far into it, I'll tell you that if you're using this in a clay application and you're trying to get water off of the surface down into the, the pipe, removing the clay from the trench and backfilling with some sort of clean uh, screen topsoil to allow the water to actually get down to the pipe is really going to enhance the performance of this. So if you're working with clay, you're digging the trench and you want this to be effective, always consider bringing in some, some outside soil, screen, sandy, you know, loamy topsoil. It's going to allow for better um, absorption of the water into the soil and get it into these pipes. We talked about this, a seven inch, 10 inch and 15 inch bundles, very, very light. It also comes in, it, it only comes in 10 foot lengths, but you can carry five lengths of this on your shoulder, like no problem. So what's great about Easy Flow is it takes gravel out of the equation. You no longer have to bring that, gra that, that dump truck with two, three tons of gravel. You can get done a, a project uh, in a fraction of the time because you're not having to wheel gravel into the backyard. Um, you're saving on manpower and you're also saving on the cleanup after the fact when somebody you know, spills stones going into the trench or you know, wobbles a little bit when it's, you know, the, the grass is covered with dew in the morning. Um, not having to bring late a gravel to a job site is a great way to save time and money. So we talked about it being gravel free. Um, great way, great application for the three inch easy flow is to use your uh, a chain trencher, six inch chain trencher that you put irrigation systems in with. If you make a six inch trench and take that three inch uh, with a seven inch diameter, three inch pipe easy flow, you can actually walk that right down into the trench because it does have some give to it. So you walk that out of the trench, backfill, and, and you're off the job. Uh, anybody out there, uh, we do offer, if you've never used Easy Flow before, buy 50, get 50 uh, feet free. You can bring that out uh, to your distributor. Um, Aquarius, if you guys have somebody that comes to you with this and they're asking you about it, um, um, just, just let me know, and you may have the voucher still in your system. If you don't, I have it. I can share it with you, and we'll get everybody taken care of. So here's an installation to show you how it kind of works around a slab foundation. Yeah, this just shows how uh, bendable, adaptable the system is. So um, we'll move on to a, a next area here. And I apologize about the pace here. I know I'm, I'm flying, but uh, I just want to make sure I get this all in and then we can you know, either talk about it at the end if somebody wants to stay afterwards. I mean, I got nothing going on. So uh, I'll, I'll stay as long as everybody wants to answer questions. Um, water and landscape beds are natural areas. You know, you, if you have standing water like you're seeing here, like in this bed, <clears throat> put a flat grate in there with mulch around it. When that area floods, the mulch will just kind of rise and then that mulch will eventually make its way over top of the grate and then the grate can, can clog and then you run into issues. So what do we do to get around that? Instead of using a flat grate in this area, we can use, you can see my cursor here, we use an atrium grate. It's gonna stick up a little bit higher. You can see that the opening goes all the way up the sides of the grate and on the top. So no matter how much this water and this mulch rises, it's still going to have an area to get into the into the catch basin. Like this. Picture of an atrium right there. Uh, high groundwater is a, a, a subsurface condition related to topography, soils, and sources of water. Uh, hydrostatic pressure from groundwater can also uh, topple retaining walls and cause wet basements and crawl spaces. So some products that are going to work for, for um, high groundwater are going to be easy flow and flow wells. You know, that water just sort of perpetually leaching up or just making its way back down again. Um, if you give that a place to go under the ground, you no longer see it at the surface anymore. It's going to be dealt with under the surface. 
So combination of, of drainage problems, you know, that's what we have that table for that we looked at in the beginning. Um, you know, usually there's not just one problem. Usually there's a multitude of problems. It's, well, I've got a wet area in my lawn because I've got a downspout issue, or I've got, um, you know, high groundwater in this area because of something that's going on on a property next to mine. I need to be able to intercept that to get it somewhere else before it makes its way in the low spot of my yard. You, you've got to be able to kind of identify the issues that you're having and then think, well, what products are at my disposal that I'm going to be used to deal with these things? So improving a drain solution, flow wells and easy flow are always going to be a really great way to, to deal with things. Uh, to deal with with high groundwater, to deal with standing water in the yard. You want to be able to deal with that water under the ground, not at the surface. Hey, Eric, real quick. Um, yep. On the easy flow, just a question came across. Um, how long does the pack and peanuts and fabric last on the easy flow? They're plastic. They're going to have, they're, they'll last longer than, than, than you and I will, that's for sure. I mean, it's basically a, a styrofoam type product. So, um, I mean, if you did an installation and, you know, the one thing I will tell people with easy flow is make sure that it's at least six inches below the ground because you don't want somebody running over that thing with an aerator in the fall when they're reseeding the lawn. Uh, that, that'll just cause major, major issues. Can I give a definitive answer? I mean, I'd say 40 to 50 years before that thing starts to kind of break apart under the ground. If you're planting it around, you know, if, if you're putting easy flow around an area with sycamore trees with bad surface roots, they're going to make its way into it. Well, that might be a, uh, that, that's definitely going to negatively impact that system. Um, but if it's out in the middle of a lawn and buried six inches deep, it's not really something you're going to have to, to worry about decomposing over time. Does that answer the question without answering the question? Uh, Adam here. I, I also had a question on the uh, easy flow in terms of the load capacity. Uh -huh. Like if someone, you know, obviously it's safe for like lawnmowers to ride over in the yard and so forth, but is there, is there documentation on the load capacity of, of the easy flow? Um, we have some, let's put it this way. It is because I get this question all the time. Well, if I put in the easy flow and then I go back there with a the skid loader after the fact, am I going to tear it up? Is that kind of the, uh, the, the, the question that you get asked to you, Adam? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, I would say going over it with a wheeled machine, I would definitely want to see some protection put down over the top of it. Um, track machines, as long as you're not, you know, turning around and spinning, you know, digging right where these things are you have a lot less uh, pounds per square feet in those areas. So a track machine is going to be offer very little disruption. Um, it, do I have an exact number? I can look around and see if I can get an exact number on how much load it can handle. But these things are, are planted in area. I mean, are installed in areas where they have tractors going over the top of them pretty regularly. And um, basically it's not, it's not a, it's not a product that's going to crack. This thing's going to flex because it is so malleable. So you get a lot, it's a lot more forgiving than say some types of pipe buried at, at short distances. Okay, thanks Eric. So here's just a kind of a, a little video here to show you how kind of everything sort of works that we talked about here with a catch base and a filter and then making its way to, uh, to other areas in the landscape. So there it's getting conveyed through a four inch pipe then it's going out to the easy flow, again, the pipe, and then coming out of a emitter. Because you've got the easy flow and the flow well, the amount of water that's making it into the gutter kind of back that way is going to, the amount of water that's going to make it out of here as the amount of, compared to the amount of water that's actually going into the system is going to be reduced because you have easy flow and flow well out there. So here's that, uh, that, that sheet again that we talked about. So if, if anybody needs this, I'm, I'm, I can share the, the sheet, or if you want to do a screen capture while we're sitting here, uh, feel free. You know, if you need a minute, just let me know, or if you need me to come back to it, let me know. Because that basically is the end of, of, of this presentation. So another we, we cover with downspout runoff, 
uh, runoff from impervious surfaces revealed down the channel drain. Uh, water in lawn or low areas, easy flow, flow well. Water in natural landscape beds, atrium grates. High water, groundwater combination of problems. A big part of this course is for you to be able to identify problems, but also to understand that you can work, a, you can tie a catch basin and a channel drain and run those through pipe, which will then connect to a flow well and then the easy flow and then to an emitter. We've got the, you know, our products are designed to work together. So if you kind of tie all these things together with the, with a lot of the things that, that, that we presented here today, you're really going to end up with a solution that's going